Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, and it's uh, another unboxing video. This one uh, about a couple of uh, reels that Scott has continued to find out there on the West Coast uh, by frequenting flea markets and other sites. And uh, he sent me another box to uh, tune up and repair. And then I have some late arrivals uh, from the last projects of the week that uh, I want to share with everybody and if you're interested and like to see videos on them please let me know well scott continues to do well at his flea markets and uh this one looks like uh some recent finds at the rose bowl in july so anybody uh out by the rose bowl look for scott let's see what we got well the first one up well this is an interesting one this is a lawrence reel it's the number 230 it always looks like a pen and it kind of fools people a lot of times thinking maybe it is a pen reel. Well, it's not, even though you look very closely and you say, geez, these have all the kind of telltale signs of a pen. But the parts don't work and it's not a pen. Lawrence was uh, Lawrence Toy Company. They were headquartered in New York City. They uh, wanted to extend their toy line, so they got into fishing reels in the 40s. And they did blatant copies of reels. I guess the IP or the patent uh, protection wasn't that good at the time. And uh, what New York Toy Company did first, I believe, was uh, to copy the Bronson reels. And then they, later on, they got into copying the pen reels. And uh, Lawrence, the name Lawrence, comes from Lawrence, Massachusetts. And Lawrence, Massachusetts is where the factory was. Uh, that made these reels, so that's why it was named that. Well, they're out of business. You can't get parts for these. If you do try to service one of these, believe it or not, it looks very much like a pen inside, too. It kind of, uh, as I mentioned, a pretty blatant uh, uh, attempt to uh, fool people, I guess. All right, well, the next one up, Scott. Scott is one of my favorite ones. This is a Jigmaster. It's a 505 high speed. It's got the ball bearings on both sides making this one an extremely nice castable reel, except that this one, well, let's get it in the gear. Something is a little tight with this one. That should not be spinning when it's in free spool. So there's something a little bit jammed up in here, and we'll figure out what that is, but this one should, uh, should fly. It's a beautiful condition reel. I don't know why it's stuck, but it is. We'll figure that out. We'll get that one cast in the sky. That's the Pen Jigmaster 505. Right, here's a uh, shorty. Here's the uh, Pen Squitter 146. I have one of those. All I have to do is find it. But uh, these are the short ones. They're pretty desirable, particularly if you find it with the 146 side plate on it and not the um, um, conversion kit. The 146 is the Squitter Junior. Fine casting, just like we were talking about with that Jigmaster 5, 505. Ball bearings in both sides and shorter, uh, narrower spool, less capacity. But boy, if you're in the surf for one of these, it's a joy to use and a pleasure. So, uh, Scott, thanks for sending that one along. <clears throat> well, here's a Zebco. This is the Surf Flight, uh, the 860. I haven't done one of those. This is the old style. This one's definitely what I call the uh, grease choked. It's a little bit tough. Uh, I think um, we'll take this one apart and we'll show you how it's made. This is uh, before the shielded uh, spool, uh, skirted spools from uh, like pen and the like. This one has the cup where the spool goes inside the cup. Now the problem with that is that all the water has no place to drain but into the reel. So uh, we'll see what we can do. I think I'll do a video on that one. Well, here's another one. Wow, here's, uh, I don't think I've ever seen this one. This is an Olympic, and this has got to be an older Olympic then. It's the Olympic 93. Sounds good. Sounds like it's working. I'm going to guess early 60s on this. It's got a bang bail, and uh, a lot of uh, corrosion and loss of things like the uh, plating on the drag knob and that, but I'll bet you this one is going to just be uh, solid as ever. Another big reel here. Well, this one is a Roddy. And I think probably Chris is going to recognize this one. Although this is the Roddy Matic and 902, I think it says. This is a big one. And uh, he's telling me uh, he's telling me that the 
handle is spinning. Well, there's something going on with the pin here. I'm, I'm noticing that. I think the pin is probably sheared off because it's not, doesn't appear to be turning the stud. Now we'll figure it out. The, uh, it's in free spool all the time. The handle is not catching. We'll take a look at that one. Here's an Olympic Thousand, and Scott has sent quite a few Olympics in. He sent in the Olympic Zebra. He sent an Olympic Spark, and now we got an Olympic uh, VS 1000. Again, I think this one's probably what I would call grease choked. It's very hard to turn, but we'll get that back and going again. Well, and then he sent a couple of spools for me. Here's the Newell spool for the 500. This one should be the one that fits the Jigmaster. Uh, this is not a Newell spool. I would say somebody uh, got the, the Jigmaster, put the new Newell spool on, and uh, kind of put the other one in for storage. So uh, that's a Pen 500 spool. Here's a spool for the 250. Scott was asking me how you identify them. Well, these are actually the pen numbers. The 250 and the 500 at the end are actually model numbers. The 250 is the larger uh, Surfmaster. That Surfmaster came before the Jigmaster. It's the same size, and you can actually swap out a lot of these uh, pieces and parts. It says here you can use number 250, 259, that's a, uh, that's a live, uh, live liner that they made. It's a Long Beach 259. It's a live liner reel. And the 500, which is the Jigmaster. So that spool is interchangeable with the three. Well, this one's kind of interesting. It says it's the same thing, but then it's, it's not. So let's see what we got here as well. Well, again, we have a, uh, we have the 500 spool, I guess. So how do you tell if it's a 500 spool if it, um, if it doesn't say so with all the line on it? You have to back it all off. There should be an imprint on the bottom of the spool on the arbor that would tell you that. But that's a, that's a 500 spool as well. Um, one more. And Scott's been doing a good job with these, these nice older reels. Now we have a, a pen squitter. This is the big size squitter as opposed to the narrow frame squitter. So this is the 140 and this is the 146. This one's either got a, a twisted frame to it or a bad spool. There's a skip going on there. And again, we'll try and figure that out. So Scott continues to, uh, to find some really nice uh, versions of some classic uh, fishing reels out at those flea markets. And I would encourage you, if you uh, enjoy uh, real repair, if you want to learn some more, then find a local yard sale, find a flea market, uh, find uh, places where vendors sell fishing equipment, and go ahead and buy some of that stuff, and then try your hand at it to see uh, see what's uh, what you like and what you don't like about it. Well, let's get rid of Scott's stuff for now. There's a couple of late arrivals that came in since I did my last preview. So let's take a look at that. The first one was actually dropped in my dropped off in my shop. Uh, this one is, uh, I believe this came from Charles. This is a Calcutta 400B. It's a Shimano. Uh, sticking issues with the free spool release and just a general tune-up. Uh, Charles said he doesn't think that that reel's been tuned up in about five years. Well, that kind of goes past the, uh, the idea of an annual service. When should you service a reel? Well, I just... My take is service it annually, and uh, if you can, by all means, get it set for the next season so you don't miss the early season runs. All right, this is coming in a Daiwa box. This is coming in from Troy. And let's see if it's a Daiwa or maybe something else. And it's a Wolf and Sheep's clothing. This is a Pen 975. So it's not a Daiwa. The 975 is one of the three models of the Penn International Baitcaster. It's a gold uh, series reel. And here you go. There it is. The Penn 975. I, uh, I'm going to get two dropped off to me soon. The 955 and the 965, the, the smaller versions of the same. Well, he's got a note in here. Uh, 
not quite sure what the issue is there. I don't need to take the time to read it on uh, on air here, but uh, we will do a video on those. I do have one or two of those that are on my uh, uh, library. So if you are interested in that, if you just see input, Penn International 975, how to service, my video should come up. All right, this one's coming in from uh, Frederick, and he's in uh, Virginia. And he's got a, uh, a pen spin fisher. This is the 450 SS. That's the third generation. You had the uh, the green generation, and then you had the black gold generation moving over. Those were the 700 series. Then the 450s came next. These are highly desirable reels. The problem that we're running into now is that parts are becoming very scarce for them. Particularly if you need uh, drive mechanisms, very, very hard to get. Hey, right, well, the last one is coming in from uh, uh, New York. I've uh, talked to this fellow before. Shares my name. This is from Dennis out of uh, Long Island. And it's, I believe this is also one of those uh, Penn International reels. So we'll get a quick look here. It's a big box for a small reel, but there you go. This uh, looks like looks to be the Levelmatic. Yeah, this is the Levelmatic 940. And uh, now we got a reel in a bag project, right? So uh, things to keep me busy, things to keep you entertained. So if you are interested in seeing any of these as videos, please go ahead and uh, leave that in the comment section. I will do my best to uh, try and get the uh, videos made, time permitting, and I uh, will try and uh, show everybody how to take these videos apart, how to check them, do an ID in terms of uh, any issues that might be there, problem diagnosis and the like, and then get these out there fishing again, giving them a second chance. So to all of our first responders and essential personnel, thank you for all it is that you do. To everybody, I hope you've been enjoying these series. And uh, again, leave, uh, any uh, comments you may have, I try to answer them on a daily basis. And to everybody, please stay safe. I wish you great fishing. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.